Okay, hey everybody, uh, back again for part two of the underpainting tutorial. And um, first I'm going to talk a little bit about the supplies that we are going to use today in order to get our underpainting accomplished on these geometric figures. We have burnt umber oil paint. I am using Windsor and Newton Winton burnt umber. Uh, any burnt umber will work, so it doesn't really matter what kind you have as long as it is oil and not acrylic. I have some Zestit Lean oil painting medium. This is the medium that I ordered from England, a company called Jackson's Art Supply. I don't believe you can currently get this in the United States. The reason I like this is because it's non-toxic and uh, it's a good alternative to paint thinner or liquid. But you can also use liquid. That is an alternative to this and you can get that at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. So either one will work. This is just my uh, preferred medium that I use for the underpaintings. And I have put that, some of that in this little um, cup and then it has a little clip on the bottom of it. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it just clips right onto my palette here and makes it handy and easily accessible when I'm ready for it. Crucial for an underpainting are Q-tips. And that'll become apparent here shortly when I start the actual process. I also have some shop towels. I use these instead of regular paper towels only because I find that they uh, have less lint and uh, they work really well at cleaning brushes and, and wiping off things on your canvas and so on. So roll of shop towels. For the brushes that I'm gonna to use today, I have several different sizes of flats from larger down to really small. And also crucial for underpainting is a mop brush. I have a tiny one here since these uh, shapes are pretty tiny, but it's a really soft brush that you use for blending helps you achieve really soft blends and uh, erase all of the hard lines in between value changes in your umber. So a mop brush is critical. So let's talk a little bit about values before we actually get into the painting. Uh, you will notice on the reference photo here that there are different values, which refers to the lightness or darkness of the color. On the sphere, you've got a really dark value here around this side, a really light value on the upper left corner, and a middle value or medium value down here uh, on the bottom. You've also got varying values in the shadow that's cast. The closer to the object, the darker the shadow or the darker the value. As you proceed away from the object, the lighter the value gets. We will achieve the value changes in the paint by varying the amount of medium we use with it. For the dark values, we will use virtually no medium at all. We will use the paint right out of the tube to allow it to remain really dark. For the middle ground areas, we will use a little bit of medium to dilute that color or the pigment a little bit. And for the lighter values, it'll be a lot more medium in the paint to dilute it even further. So that's how we're gonna do that. I will say this, when you're first starting these, uh, sometimes your eyes find it difficult to determine the really subtle value changes. The more you do underpainting or the more you study and analyze photos like this, uh, the more trained your eye will become to picking up those subtle changes in value. So practice makes perfect. Now I will also show you this on my palette here. I have a value scale. You can see it right here. Zero 
here is the darkest value up to 10, which is the lightest. If it helps, you can take a pen and on your reference photo, you could write little numbers to indicate what value you think these shades are. So this would be, of course, with number one being the darkest or zero being the darkest, this would be a zero. This may be a five and this may be a 10. So if it helps, if you're having issues getting your eye to pick up those subtle changes, study it, go in with a pen on your reference photo and mark what you think each value is. And that way when you're applying your paint, you have that to refer to. So a number zero, you would say, okay, well, I, that's really dark, so I'm not adding any medium to that. Uh, for a five, which is a middle ground value, uh, you would add a little bit of medium. Of course, it's gonna be lighter than the dark, but not as light as this really light area here, okay? So that's one trick that you can use to help train your eye to pick up those changes. All right, so let's get started with this. gonna put some of my burnt umber out onto my palette here. We, we're not gonna need a lot for this painting because it's only an eight by 10, relatively small. And it doesn't take a lot of paint to get done what we're gonna do here today. Okay, now whenever you are doing an underpainting, I would suggest using the biggest biggest brush that you feel comfortable using for what area, whatever area you're working on. Only because that helps you stay loose and um, <clears throat> you don't want to, to get really tight as far as detail on this because, you know, it's just general shading and there's not really any tight detail to worry about with these figures. So I'm going to start off with the largest flat brush that I have here. Now there are a couple of ways that you can accomplish the underpainting process. I'm going to illustrate both ways. You can choose whichever works best for you. Uh, I have my preferred method, but other people do it a different way. And I'm going to show you both ways just so that you'll have those available to you and you can decide whichever you like the best. So let's start with the sphere. One way to do an underpainting and I'm gonna dip into a little bit of medium here. Put that on my palette, and then I'm gonna go into a little bit of the paint and work that into the medium. So technically here, I'd say I have a kind of a middle value, not light, not dark, somewhere in between. And I am going to cover the entire sphere and the area of the shadow with this medium and paint mixture. Work that into my brush and then I'm going to cover the entire thing with this middle value. Also going to do the shadow. And you can see that I'm scrubbing this into the canvas to get it down into the weave. So now with this process of underpainting, what we're going to do next is we're going to take a paper towel or a shop towel and we are going to wipe out the lightest areas. So you can see on the reference photo right here is where the light is striking the sphere. So I'm going to wipe that out.
just gauge where that light area stops. Okay. Wipe that out. I'm gonna go one more time because that is really light. You can see little fuzzes of paint that are um, being stirred up here, but that's okay. When we mop that, that will go away. Now, I'm gonna take my mop and I'm just gonna really gently mop over this entire object to get it smooth. And you can see the medium here is causing it to become darker in certain areas. You just want to keep mopping until you work your medium in. Okay, like so. I also see that the shadow is a little bit lighter over here on the outer edge. So I'm going to wipe that back a little bit. You can also use Q-tips for this. Q-tips are especially helpful when you have a really tight area that you're trying to uh, mop out. Okay. All right. Now, basically what we have here now is the middle ground covering the whole thing and we've wiped out some of the really light areas, okay? Now we're gonna go in with our paint and we're gonna add some darks. So you can see on the reference photo that right here in this strip on the sphere, we've got some really dark paint. So I'm just going straight into the paint and I'm using a little bit smaller flat brush for this. And hopefully you can see on the palette that that paint is much darker since we don't have any medium in it than what we used to cover the entire sphere to start with, okay? So now I'm gonna start here, and I'm going to basically make a dark area here where I see the darkest colors on the sphere. And you can see that it gets a little bit lighter as it fades out over here. So just let that paint work off of your brush as you get into the lighter areas and it will become progressively lighter. Okay. And then on the bottom here, just keep blending it out. What you're trying to avoid is really hard lines between the value changes and the mop brush will help with that also but I'm just gonna keep going over and over and over this line here, just to blend it out a little bit, <clears throat> okay? So now we've got our dark area right here. And you can see that right here, there's a middle ground around that light area. So I'm just gonna go ahead and blend some of that darker color up so that it gradually changes from darker to lighter. See, I have a little bit of um, paint outside the line here, so I'm just gonna use my Q-tip to wipe that back and clean that up a little bit. It's where Q-tips are really handy for this, okay? So now, I'm gonna take my mop brush and I'm going to blend these areas of light and dark together. Again, like I said, what you're looking for here is a gradual change from the dark value to the lighter value. And I'm just really gently going over this. And of 
course, if you get too dark in the light area, you can take your shop towel and go out and wipe it out again, which I will probably do. There's one little spot here that I'm not <clears throat> thrilled with. It looks like a little bit too much of the light has been wiped out by this dark paint. So I'm gonna take my Q-tip and just work that light area back out again. Wipe off some of that paint that I got on there. And the same with down here on this edge. I've got a little bit too dark here, so I'm gonna wipe that back as it goes up the side. Okay, and then I'm gonna mop one more time. <clears throat> Keep mopping and you want to mop really softly. Don't use a really hard pressure for this part. Okay, so there you have the sphere. <clears throat> I do think I want to add a little bit more dark to the area that's darkest right in here. And basically it's just going to be a process of going back and forth with your light and dark until you get your values correct and you're satisfied with all the value changes. Okay, so that's the sphere. Now you can see that the contrast between this really light area here where the light is hitting it versus the dark area here that's more in shadow is what establishes the form of this sphere and gives it a three-dimensional look. That is the purpose of an underpainting. I'm also going to work now a little bit on the shadow. You can see that right here under the sphere is the darkest area of the shadow, so I'm going to lay a really dark line here under the sphere using paint with no medium at all in it. So, and now as the shadow comes away from the object, it gets lighter and lighter. So I'm just going to work some of this out into the rest of the shape of this shadow. You can also use some of the umber that I mixed with the medium. It's going to be a little lighter. And you can see that it's a lot lighter out here on the very outer edge. So we're gonna leave that. We're not gonna add much paint there because we want that to remain light. And I'm gonna go in and darken a little bit more here underneath. Right up next to this sphere here on the table because that's where, like I said, the shadow is the darkest. And then just let that work out gradually into the outer edges of this shadow, like so. Now we'll take our mop and once again, we'll soften, soften this down, mop this down. Remove all the brush strokes from it so that it's nice and smooth. Now I'm going to take my Q-tip and wipe a little of this out around the edge where I'm seeing a lighter value here. And mop once again. It's also helpful if you wipe off your mop brush in between to get some of that paint off of it. Don't wash it in thinner or anything because it's really difficult to get thinner out of the mop brush and get it completely dry. So what you're essentially doing when you go mop, if you've washed it, is since there will be still a little bit of thinner in the brush, it's going to take your paint off. 
so you want to avoid washing it until the end of your painting day you can wash it and then overnight it should dry now I'm going to go back in here one more time and reinforce reinforce this really dark shadow here right underneath the sphere and again work that out like so mop one more time So there you have it. That is one method of doing it where you apply a medium value to the entire object and then wipe out your light areas and reinforce your dark areas with paint that has no medium in it. I'm going to, looking at this, I'm going to add a little bit more dark paint to this one area right here because I don't feel like my value changes strong enough. So I'm going to Add a little bit more of the dark pink here in this really dark area on this sphere. Another good way of blending is just to keep going back and forth over the line where your dark areas meet your lighter areas and blend the line out like I'm doing here. The sphere is done, and now we will move on to the cube. Okay, moving on to the cube. Now you will notice on the cube here <clears throat> that the light is striking from this direction. You'll see the top of the cube here is the lightest area, a really dark shadow on this face, and a medium value on this face. So, the second way that you can do an underpainting is not to apply a medium value over the whole thing like I did with the sphere, but just put in your dark value first. So that's going to be, like I said, on right here on this face of the cube. And it does get lighter as it moves toward the bottom. So you'll just want to let that paint, that real dark that you laid there at the top, fade out. It's still quite dark at the bottom and on this edge over here, but just let it fade out as it goes down. And we will mop this to get it smooth and remove all the brush strokes, but your darkest area is going to be right here along this line. So when you lay your paint down, start at the darkest spot and then work out from that okay now there's a little bit of light right here so I'm going to wipe a little bit of this area out you can see down right here in this lower corner here there's a little bit of light hitting right there so I'm going to wipe that out then I'm going to take my mop I'm going to wipe it off, get all the paint out of it as much as possible, and just mop this out, starting at the dark area and working your way down. Again, the goal here is to remove any hard lines in between your value changes so that you've got a gradual progression from darker to lighter, like so. Okay? Now, for this face of the cube, right here, you'll notice that it's pretty light down this corner and it gets progressively darker as you move to this corner. So I'm going to use quite a bit of medium to get a really light value of the umber. 
I'm going to put that down here in this corner and across the bottom. And then I'm going to add a little more paint to that to get a little bit darker value. And I'm going to start in this corner and add that. Now these value changes are subtle, so you're not going to see a huge difference in value from the darker side or the darker area on this face to the lighter area, but there is a difference, which is what I was talking about, training your eye to see those subtle value changes. A little bit more paint here, just to darken this area just a little bit. Well, you'll notice where I'm painting here is nowhere near as dark as this face, okay? So, you want to keep it all relative. All right, once I get that on, then I'll mop that out. Just keep mopping until you get it really smooth. If you have too much medium, you can take a paper towel and wipe a little bit of that off. It makes it easier to blend. Okay, and then mop again. Basically what you're doing is you're just going back and forth, adding darker and lighter, and then mopping to remove brush strokes and to soften value changes until you're satisfied with the result. You see down here I've got a little that's come out from around this edge, and I will just wipe that back with a little Q-tip. Clean up the edges there. Okay. Then mop one more time. And again, really, really light pressure when you're mopping. If you wipe too hard, you're gonna end up removing paint. Like so. And clean up under here one more time. All right. Now, for the top face of this cube, you can see this is the lightest Part of the cube. That's where the light is striking. So what I typically do for that, I wipe out most of the paint out of my brush, <clears throat> pick up just a little bit of medium, a little tiny bit of paint. You don't want much paint at all because this is really light up here. And just to add a little bit of color, I will add a really, really light value of this umber. Very little paint on the brush, hardly none. Just enough to give it a little bit of color is all we're after here. Okay. Something like that. All right. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go back in one more time with some really dark paint and reinforce this line right here where the shadow is the darkest and just blend that down. Okay, like so. And clean up this line right here. my mop one more time just to soften a little bit more and 
There you have it. And that's your cube. Okay? Now let's work on the shadow. <clears throat> you can see here where, in this case, the shadow is really dark down here under this edge. And then it's a little bit lighter up in this area. Okay, so we're gonna do, follow the same process. Get some straight paint, no medium at all in it. And lay that right under the block where it sits on the table. And then you can see that it's dark here also. We'll just fill this area in with dark. Now, as it works away from the cube back into this area, it gets progressively lighter. So we'll just keep going with the same brush and let the paint work off of the brush so that you're applying less paint and you've got a lighter value here. And then just work over the area where the dark and light meet to make that really smooth. Once you have that done, you take your mop, <clears throat> as you did with the cube, and you just mop it out. I am gonna take a Q-tip and wipe a little bit of this back right here in this area because it's quite a bit lighter shadow is in this area right here. I'm gonna wipe that out. And then mop one more time right along the area where that dark and light meet. And there you have it. <clears throat> so that is our cube. So now I've illustrated the two different ways that I know of that you can apply this burnt umber uh, for the underpainting. And really quick, just to review that, you could apply the entire, over the entire area, a medium value, wipe out your lights and highlight, or sorry, reinforce your darks by adding dark paint. Or you can not apply paint over the whole thing, but just apply the different values where you see them. The dark, for example, here, a little bit lighter on this side, really light up here where the light is striking, and so on. Whichever way you'd like to use or whichever way you find easiest for you um, is fine. Like I said, you can do this either way. So now we're gonna go on to the, we'll do the, the cylinder next. So when you're analyzing your reference photo of this cylinder, you will see that the light again is coming from here, this direction. Your shadow is cast over on this side. So this area right here is the dark value. That is where the, it's in shadow. You've got a light value over here on this edge because the light is striking it. And of course, the top face of the cylinder is light also. So it gets progressively lighter as you move from this darkest area here to the bottom. So we're gonna start by applying the darkest paint with no medium, right up here around this edge, okay? And then we're just gonna work that down I need a little, a little medium in there now because it's getting hard to uh, spread the paint. Okay, and then work that down to the bottom. Okay. 
and we'll clean that top edge up here in a little bit. But uh, then what you're gonna do is just let your paint gradually get lighter as you work off to the edge. You can also control the value of the paint by how uh, hard you're pushing on your brush. Uh, more pressure on the brush will, of course, allow more paint to come off and it will be darker. The less pressure you use on the brush, the less paint comes off and it will be lighter. So you'll have to just get the feel of the different methods of applying darker and lighter paint. Um, and as you practice this and do it more, you will find that it does get easier. Over here on this edge of the cylinder, I'm seeing a lighter area, so I'm just basically filling that in, really soft pressure. Um, but you can see that there is a difference there from that edge to the really dark value that's right here. Now again, for the top of this cylinder, I'm gonna wipe most of the paint off my brush Pick up just a little bit of medium with a tiny, tiny bit of paint in it, and then I'm going to just add a tiny, tiny bit of really light color to the top face of this cylinder. And you can see I am getting some of the color off that uh, dark area, but I can wipe that back out with a Q-tip. And I can also clean up that edge a little bit where the top meets the side. Okay. Once I have that done, I'm going to take my mop brush and I'm going to, you can either brush or tap. I find if you tap, it's also a good way of blending colors together or the values together and then I'm just going to um, mop the rest of it very very gently work in that darker paint you can see I have a hard line right here that I want to try to um, try to get rid of so I'm just very lightly going over that to blend it in Okay, now, since that area over here is really light, I'm gonna wipe it back a little with a paper towel and then mop one more time. To soften this edge here. So that is your cylinder. For the shadow, you can see that we have a really dark shadow here that again gets progressively lighter as you work out to the edge. So I'm going to take the dark paint with no medium and I'm going to lay it around the bottom of this cylinder like so. And allow that to work out and become lighter as you go toward the outer edge of the shadow. Lighting, lightening up my pressure a little bit on the outer edge there, which also helps to get a lighter value. I'm basically just filling in. So, now I'm going to take my mop and I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit. like so. And that's 
That's your cylinder. Now on to the last shape, which is this little pyramid right here. Taking a look at the reference photo, we see that the darkest area is right down the center. The lightest area is over on this side, so we can tell that the light is coming in from this direction. The middle value is over here on this side. So we're going to start with paint without medium to get the darker value and we're going to lay that right here down this middle streak like so. Now, since this over here on this edge is the middle value, we're just going to work this over. I'm going to get a little medium on my brush, work some of that out. I don't want a ton of medium. It just helps it to spread a little bit. And pull this dark paint out to this edge, allowing it to get a little bit lighter as you go. To establish that middle value like so now over here on this side it's really really light so I'm going to wipe off a lot of the paint from my brush just have a little bit of paint left in there and then lay the really light paint over here on this side Now, you can see here that we have a really hard line between the darkest value and the lightest value. So this is where we are going to take our mop and uh, soften that line down. Or, like I said, you can use your brush. Basically, just want to go back and forth over this line with really light pressure. Work from the dark into the light, back into the dark, back and forth like so. And that will soften that line down so that you can't really tell that there's a line there. You just want a gradual progression from the dark area to the light area. Getting smooth blends is sometimes tricky, but like I said, with just about anything you do, the more you practice, the better you will get at, at the blending. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my mop brush, and just mop over everything again, remove all the brush strokes, really smooth like so I see I've got a little bit of dark down here where the medium collected I'm just gonna wipe that out with my q-tip And there is your pyramid. Now for the shadow, again, shadow is darkest closest to the bottom here, right around this edge, and gets progressively lighter as you work out. So, using paint with no medium in it, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get a smaller brush for this. I'm gonna go ahead and establish that really dark line around the bottom edge. And then start pulling that out toward the outer edge of that shadow. Grab a little medium here. <clears throat> 
And then I'm just filling in with lighter paint or lighter value off to the edge as it moves away from the figure. Adding a little more dark here and pulling that out. Like so. Just gonna straighten up my lines a little bit here. reinforce this dark area one more time. And work that out to blend it in. And that's a good point also that I want to make. You can, once this dries a little bit and your medium um, isn't quite as wet, you can go back in and reinforce these darks. In fact, I do that quite often when I'm working on an underpainting. I will um, do the initial underpainting coat and then I'll let it dry and then I'll take a look at it and see, are my darks dark enough? Are my lights light enough and so on? And then I can make adjustments. Like for this sphere, I see that I'd like a little bit darker paint right around the base right here. So I'm gonna add some of that now. And this medium is starting to tack up a little bit so it's a little easier to get that uh, dark paint to stay really dark. But definitely once you finish your underpainting, go back and, um, and make adjustments if you feel that you need to do that, especially with reinforcing your dark values. Okay, so there you have it. That is the underpainting of the four geometric figures. Um, as always, if you have any questions or you'd like help with a certain part of this, feel free to send me an email and I will reply um, and, and give you some answers or some guidance, whatever you're looking for. My email address is Shelly, S-H-E-L-L-Y, at inspiredbrushworks.net. All right, guys, that's the end of this underpainting tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and stay tuned. I will be doing some more videos of um, underpaintings, a little more complicated things with a little more detail, so stay tuned for that. You guys have a great day. Take care.